Sorry to scare you all, but the game is canceled! Okay, so I had a big ol' script in the works analyzing elements of Uchikoshi and Kodaka's previous works as a means of getting people interested in World's End Club, despite the absence of a death game. But I need a break from making the Project Eva X video, and Genosia comes out in a few days too. So unfortunately for you, you get to deal with the feral off-the-cuff me instead of the more collective spent more than 20 minutes writing the script me. Sorry Tokyo Games, one day you'll get a video from me that has focus, but today is not that day. World's End Club showed up in the Nintendo Direct a few weeks ago, and I was almost too busy popping off in the voice call to notice that they had revealed what those of us with iPads and those without self-control, or both, already knew. That the game of fate wasn't the focus, rather having the story focus on the 12,000 kilometer journey of the Go-Getters Club across the ruined Japan in the pursuit of answers. With this reveal, I've seen the same take all over the place. Well, it's not a death game, so hard pass. And I've especially seen this take from people familiar with Uchi and Kodaka's other works. But your familiarity with those works is exactly why you should be interested. Here's a few brief bullet points why. Oh, and since this video is mainly for people who've played Zero Escape and Danganronpa, there will be spoilers for both. If you're new and just came because of your interest in World's End Club, uh, hi, you have a lot to look forward to. But you should probably play Zero Escape and Danganronpa before watching this video. Thank you. A common thread with almost all of Uchikoshi's works is that they take place in a confined environment. Be it a smaller scale character focused story, like the Infinity Games or 999, or a larger scale world at stake story, like the other half of the Zero Escape trilogy or Punchline. They all take place in a single location, the only exception immediately coming to mind being I the Somnium Files, which takes place across all of Tokyo. World's End Club breaks this mold by being a journey across the country, a very refreshing change of pace. It's an environment that matches the scope of its World's End story, and it comes with the benefit of a very different game feel. The intrigue is still there, but it feels less like a mystery and more like an honest-to-god journey, with a lot of emphasis on the places you'll see, the people you'll meet, and the little moments in between, and it's a very interesting change from Uchikoshi's previous works. I don't think it's that controversial to say that a great number of Danganronpa's characters leave a lot to be desired in regards to their development. A show of hands, how many people remember Leon and his wish to become the ultimate musician without abandoning his love for playing baseball? I know I didn't until looking it up just now to make this point. I'm not saying Kodaka can't write good characters, it's more like the death game, by its very design, gives some characters more time to work with than others. World's End Club, in foregoing the death game, gives the characters more room to breathe. Without a ticking clock over their heads counting down to their deaths, they have time to hang out, have a greater presence in the overall story, have little arcs and character development peppered throughout the game, and overall just be more fleshed out characters without having to deal with whatever the hell this thing was. At the end of the day, it's still a Kodaka Uchikoshi joint. You still have Kodaka's colorful cast of characters and his offbeat humor, and you have Uchikoshi's crazy plot twists that live right free in your head for at least a full day after playing. It's still their work, just on a grander scale in regards to the story's environment. We can talk about how bad an idea it was to market World's End Club as a death game for as long as they did. Trust me, I'll be getting my say in on that in the future. Look, if you're itching for a death game that invokes the spirit of Danganronpa and Zero Escape, your turn to die is right there. But this is exactly the kind of game Tokyo Games was made to create. A game that invokes similar elements to what its creators made before, while still being an entirely different thing in its own right, taking strides away from what came before. It's fine to be upset about the initial marketing, but I hope you can look past it comes the game's release proper, because it's worth your attention, and it deserves far better than to be written off for not being another death game. Hey, that was a quick video, wasn't it? Sorry if it felt disjointed or if it barely scratched the surface of World's End Club, but I don't want to have too much fun right now. It gotta leave some surprises for those just jumping in, because it already feels like I might have said a bit too much. I really just wanted to get my piece in, because man, it's been exhausting seeing World's End Club get written off like it has. Uh, hopefully if you were on the fence, my out of focus bullet points at least gave you something to think about. And if you need a bit more convincing, make sure to come back sometime in early June, because you bet this game's gonna live rent-free in my head for at least a month, 
so I'll for sure be doing a proper video on it then. Had to leave something for me to talk about. Until then, it's time to get back to work on other things while counting down the days until May 28th. So, I'll see you all next time. Tony,